<laughs> Hi, come on in. You're perfect timing, Christine. Give me a thumbs up, Jen, when you're ready. All right. Well, good evening, everybody, and welcome. This is, I know, a, a tough time of year for folks to be out uh, on a school night when so many things are going on, but it was important to start this conversation before the summer uh, got in full swing, and uh, we'll, we'll be uh, wrapping it up over the uh, course of the fall uh, so that we'll be ready for the first uh, trimester and first uh, semester uh, at our middle schools and, and high school, respectively. I'm Michael Wood, Superintendent of Schools, and I'm glad you're here. Uh, I have a few slides just to talk to you a little bit about the uh, proposal that we have and we're really looking for your reaction and your understanding of what you want to do to help recognize achievement and effort uh, by our students and by your children. So uh, let me start by just going ahead and uh, show, uh, talking a little bit about the proposal. First, I want to tell you that this arose uh, out of our continued work with our communication about student performance uh, as we were progressing forward on the reporting tool for the middle schools, we realized that all three middle schools had a different methodology for the honor roll. And so in order for us to continue uh, with a common report card, we have to have a common tool for uh, designating the honor roll. We uh, also realized that the high schools was totally different from all of the three middle schools. So this was a good time to have the conversation and get started on talking about a 6 through 12 uh, recognition for achievement uh, and effort. So the proposal that uh, we're talking about uh, looked at all four methodologies and tried to pull together uh, those uh, components that we thought continue to recognize the uh, achievement of our students uh, and certainly made sure that uh, we were not harming any particular group of students that uh, in the past would be getting uh, recognition for honor roll. So the methodology looks at the essentially the grade point uh, uh, equivalency. Uh, for the um, grades earned on the, on the report card. And uh, we looked at the different um, aspects of the report card and said that we would have uh, high honors to be uh, 93 through 100, uh, no C, D, or F. Uh, honors would be 85 to a 92.9, no C, D, or F. And it would be for grades 6 through 12. And um, I said in a little verb that I sent out uh, with this on our website uh, that we were trying to bring the honor back to the honor roll. And somebody raised the, a, a very uh, important point. We're not trying to say that the current honor roll system does not bring honor. But we were trying to say is we're trying to raise the bar a bit uh, to make the recognition that, uh, because again, we, we think as we talked about it, people didn't really fully understand that A, we were all different at our middle schools and still get different at our high school, and that we allowed C's to be considered. Uh, and of course, at the high school level, C's, D's, and F's uh, are essentially considered because it's a, a, a grade point uh, equivalency. It would be the final grades for each of the courses that they take, uh, and it would be for all courses, which is slightly different. I'll talk about that in a little bit. And um, something new would be that with the middle school report cards only, uh, they would have to have a uh, meets or uh, an I, an M or an I, I is for inconsistently meets, uh, under the habits of mind or the learning habits uh, to be considered eligible, even if they met the other criteria for the honor roll. And I'll talk about that in a little bit. The big change uh, for depending on where you are and you're thinking about honor roll, is that um, we would be counting all of the courses that kids take, whether it, they are um, at, at whatever level at the high school, and how often they meet, regardless of how often they meet. Now, talk about that in a second. Uh, but they are going to be weighted based on how often they meet, so that it would be a smaller portion 
of the total uh, grade point um, that they uh, come up to in the average. And uh, so if a class meets two out of a six-day cycle, then it's weighted less than obviously a class that meets six uh, classes out of a six-day cycle. We talk a lot about this, na this, this terminology because it is different in, in different ways that you hear about it. In Massachusetts, when we talk about core courses, we often hear ourselves saying these are the core courses. Uh, what comes to mind immediately is English, math, social studies, and science. Uh, I was just reading before uh, I started this, and another uh, particular uh, educational institution just defines core as those four plus foreign language. Uh, so core becomes really how you define it. When we looked at our core, uh, we said, well, when you think about what we expect kids to take and what we want kids to take, we really have a situation where, the, the, except for at the high school, and, and there are obviously, uh, they have more choice there, at the middle school level, they have to take all the courses we tell them to take. There are, there are really no options. So if you think of core as being the most important, well, in our case, the most important are the ones we're telling them they have to take. So we went with that definition, and that's why we're including all of the courses that they take. There are also some concerns by our educators that when you take away the um, honor roll from calculation, you devalue the course. And that students then begin to think it's not as important as other courses. And I think that our mission statement, when we're talking about the full potential of our kids, especially at the middle school level, we're really talking about developing all aspects of uh, young adolescents, and we want the arts to be a part of that. So uh, that was part of our conversation, uh, that was a big part of our conversation at the middle school level. At the high school level, we realized that uh, the only course that was not being considered was PE, and it's because it didn't meet every day. And so when we listened to that rationale and we talked about it uh, in trying to, again, trying to bring similarities between and among our schools, and through the grades 6 through 12, we decided that we would include PE. And, and like the calculation at the middle school, we'll wait. And, and it'll only be calculated as part of it uh, because of the number of times it meets. So uh, for those who take uh, PE, uh, it would be, it's every other day. And so it would only be um, half of, a, of, of the score in, in terms of going in there. So that's the methodology that we're proposing. The idea being it will bring consistency and it reinforces that we value all the courses that we require kids to take. At the high school level, you might uh, be thinking about, well, you talked about choice at the high school level. While they do have choice, it's choices w within requirements. So while there are still uh, courses that they can take as electives, that are outside of the requirements, the majority of courses that kids have to take at the high school are part of the requirements to earn the number of credits that they need to graduate. So in order for them to do that, to meet those graduation requirements in, ter in terms of the total number of credits, uh, different from what area they might have to earn them, they really have to take those courses. And so those are required courses. And so we want them to do well, and therefore to can be consistent with our thinking, we said, well, let's count it as part of the honor roll because we want them to, to take them seriously and, and to do well. So that's the uh, methodology and our thinking behind it. Uh, the learning habits, and for those of you who don't have uh, middle school students, this is a new component of the uh, middle school report card. Um, we have uh, two areas uh, where we're looking at uh, core academic areas and the specialist areas. Uh, so in those core areas, uh, and, and again, the language seems a little contradictory to what I was just talking about, but in those four academic areas plus foreign language, uh, they would look like this in terms of the academic uh, uh, habits of mind that they're look, looking at. And then for special areas, they'll be looking at those three uh, areas uh, specifically. And then this is the uh, scoring system Meet, uh, meets, oops, 
Can't touch that. And um, meets consistently. I is uh, does not consistently meet expectations, and then the S is that seldom meets expectations. So those are reported, and uh, one of the questions was how are these going to be uh, scored? Uh, so all of our teachers have to have a scoring model, uh, and we're trying to develop that consistently across the three towns so that all the teachers that teach PE, for example, will have the same tools to be able to score these. Uh, that's new, and so there'll be some, uh, you know, because it's new, we'll be looking at different ways to, to speed up the process of calibrating and getting it right across the three uh, towns. Uh, but the idea is to build that and, and we're flying it at the same time. Uh, but they will have assessments, activities that they score, <coughs> etc. Uh, and that will be part of, uh, we're not sure if they're going to keep those as part of power school, uh, which many of you are familiar with because you uh, get on or your students get on and, and observe their scores over time. But they will have that information at parent-teacher conferences so that, that teachers can communicate to you how it is they're uh, getting to that label. Uh, in that score at the end of the uh, marking period. So just for some context, uh, when we looked at the different models, these, these are the different models, and this, this uh, slide show will be on our online so that you can look at it uh, in the future. Um, you can see that there are different, um, there are differences right away, the high school, uh, has a, uh, for honors, uh, 3.0 to 3.49. Uh, Hale Middle School, high honors are all A's, uh, and then honors are all A's and B's. Uh, Luther Burbank Middle School had an 80 to 89 for honors uh, in, in all of the academics and related arts. And then high honors uh, had to be 90 or above uh, for the core academics and 80 or above uh, in the related arts. And then uh, Florence Sawyer has a, a more complex model, uh, but essentially the three at the top uh, described it best. Uh, it's still 93 or better. Uh, they don't allow a C for high on highest honors, but for high honors, they had 90 or better. They did allow a C, uh, no D or F, and then for honors, uh, it was an 85 or above, no D or F. And that was an, an averaging model. Uh, so. When we looked at the high school, we looked at this one, uh, Luther Burbank, they all had some sort of averaging model that they were using, so we, we rebuilt, uh, we built off of that. Um, and then we, we raised the bar similar to what Hale was doing with the, with the no C, and that's how that kind of came back to, to that. Um, we are, where we really need input, I think, as, it, uh, as we launched this with our school committee, uh, and I think the uh, conversation is, is where we need to understand how we want to show value for coursework by our students while at the same time not harming anybody from uh, being able to earn the, the honor of the honorable. Uh, and so um, you have at the high school level uh, the issues of the weighted versus unweighted GPA is really the conversation that we had. Uh, at the uh, school committee. So the unweighted is a 4.0 scale, whereas the unweighted, uh, the weighted GPA is a five-point scale. And so students who take, um, we have college prep, which goes through t on the um, weighted, uh, unweighted scale to 4.0. <coughs> and then if you take accelerated, uh, you have up to 4.5. So they're in the middle there. And then honors and AP, you, uh, it's weighted more for the letter grade or the academic grade up to a 5.0. There's essentially all the way through the scale a 0.5% a difference um, throughout the scale. So the theory being that these are more rigorous courses and to earn the value of a grade, it needs that more weight to really appreciate the, the work that goes into that course. 
On the other side of that conversation is when you think about student learners and what their um, abilities are and where their potential lies, for a student who um, is capable and is working hard at uh, to take college prep to get into college at, at, uh, for, at, at the college level, uh, they're only excuse me, they're only able to get up to four points for their coursework. So what we have to look at is how do we explain to and build a system that values all courses that kids need to take so we are appropriately challenging because that's really the key is that we want kids to get into courses that appropriately challenge themselves. We don't want to overextend them but we want them appropriately challenged. And so we want to make sure that they see value in those courses. At the same time, we want to make sure that we don't undervalue courses and, and students feeling like a course because it has a lesser uh, value attached to it in terms of its letter grade uh, for the GPA, that somehow they think those are less valued courses. So we've, we've got to build a system and then make sure it models the value system that the towns uh, in our district believe in. So that's where I, I leave the question to the group, is how do we uh, reward uh, achievement and effort and build that system? So in terms of the model that's proposed, I'm looking for your feedback and your questions that help, will help uh, to draw um, and build upon to firm this up a bit. Yes? Well, I'm just going to say it. Um, if you weight the GPA, even the college prep classes, if they get a B or better, they're still on honors. That's right. So that's pretty good. Mm -hmm. um, whereas the kids that are taking those honors courses, which are harder to get an A in, you're giving them a little chance. You know, so I, I, I think you you do do the weighted, but um, that'd be my my preference. Right. And I'm trying to understand. That makes complete sense. Right. I'm trying to understand what the other the other yeah. side that of the coin be. would be. Yeah. Why would that not make sense? Because um, that seems like a the the logical answer. Right. But what is the? Because so f uh, in terms of the current model and the current proposal uh, current proposal that's there, what that would allow is a student who's earning a C uh, or even less if we went to the full range like the, as they currently do. Um, to be able to get on the honor roll. And the, and the question becomes, is, is a C what's valued as being on the honor roll? Do I don't think there's anything on the, uh, in terms of the downside, in terms of just how right. she explained it. I don't right. think there's anything on the downside. Didn't today. you already remove that uh, situation by saying no C's allowed? So we have okay. in our proposal, but I think the question becomes, does that now discourage our students to appropriately motivate themselves and challenge themselves because they would have to get um, essentially a B minus or better and and no C's would be calculated and they're still working hard in, in, in a, what they would consider a more rigorous course. And the philosophy of placing is a student, uh, if, if you look at C is that's the middle of the bell curve, that's average, mm -hmm. that's your average student. Is that, um, is a student who can do C work at any level considered to be at the right level if that's really the best they can do, or are they too high of a level? D does that, did that make any sense, makes what sense I just said? Yes, it does. Okay. Sure. Um, what's throwing me is the any level part. So uh, my answer to that would be if a student feels that they're not overwhelmed and they're earning a C, and they're, they're comfortable with that, then yes, they're appropriately placed. Okay, so if, um, the, I guess the not overwhelmed is my issue with right. that statement. And, and, well, and yeah, that, but that's very right. important because right. we don't want to have situations where students feel as though um, they need to have this added stress to their lives right. With everything that they, you know, again, I'm, I'm thinking at it from a, a well-rounded student. So I'm thinking there's schoolwork, there's their, their extracurricular activities, there's family. So there's balance to life. 
Uh, and so we want our students to appropriately uh, place themselves and have conversations with their families so that they're placed in a, in a course level, whether it be college prep through honors or, or AP, that doesn't overwhelm them. So in, in, in what you're saying then, a student who is at the appropriate level can still earn C's but has not excelled at that level, which the B or the A student will have done, then what is the need to recognize them with the honor roll? And I think that's what we're, that's what we're trying to. Right. So I still so if there's so I'm true back honor, to I understand the yeah. flip side of the. Yeah. yeah of course, it should be level. If there's true honor in honor roll, is C work? What we're saying, because it's a more rigorous course, is that to be honored? Are there other ways that it becomes <laughs> appreciated by the family and by the student? And we also, on the flip side, don't want to discourage kids from pushing themselves. Trying. You know, and trying. And I don't think a lot of kids are doing what they're doing to get on the honor roll. I think if they are getting a C in an honors class, they're probably thinking, hmm, maybe I'll go to accelerate so I can do a little better next uh -huh. year. That's what I've seen, and I have had two kids through the high school so far. It's almost right. through. <laughs> so, okay. you know, I, that's been my experience. It, it, have, have you noticed that the honor roll is a, I mean, to me it seems like the honor roll, honor roll is not something that motivates. However, it can very well be something that demotivates. Um, is that is anybody that they don't make it? Even? I don't know that they pay attention that much to it. I think they a lot of them don't even really know it's kind of a complicated. So they're mm -hmm. like, I don't know if I'm on the honor roll or not. Right. It's not really published regularly. I don't know, but that's. Well, well, I, I think, I think you're right. Uh, my my sense is that the kids don't know until there's an event that suggests they should know. Yeah. Like graduation, yeah. like uh, you know, recognized for other kinds of honors throughout the years in, in school, yeah. um, and then it, then it sort of begs the question. I, my experience is just the kids at Hale School. <coughs> Excuse me. I think the kids at Hale School they know black and white where they fit in, mm -hmm. and I do feel like it's a motivating factor for them, and they do publish it in the newspaper. So I think the kids at Hale School yeah, specifically school, are, true. Right. You see are it more kind of excited to right. try to make it, so it is motivating for yeah. them. Right. And I think they all publish, yeah. Uh, yeah. but not the methodology, though. But to that point, I think what we saw this year is that um, most every child in the sixth grade made the honor roll. In Bolton. In Bolton. Yeah. I mean, if not, if not all, but it, it was very close to all. So that begs the question: What does the honor roll mean? Right, and that and was. I, and I mean, this is so. We're, this is different. A different conversation mm -hmm. from mm -hmm. we're at the high school. But the methodology that's used: If everybody makes the honor roll, why have an honor roll? Right. <laughs> what, what does it? What does it really mean anymore? But the kids know, right? They, they, they know. absolutely they know. Of course, they, they know. absolutely yeah. know. And then when it was, and it was kind of interesting. You say it's published because when it was. When the grades came home and the report card came home, children were excited. They were, you know, they, they yeah. got their grades were good. And then the, actually the publishing of it minimalized any achievement that they thought they had. Mm -hmm. But then that begs another question, what's the real achievement? Do we need to raise the standards well, overall? That's part of this because, conversation. Yeah, because. Yeah, that's why we're having Yeah, right, because exactly. everybody is, is at that level. Yeah, right. And if that's the case, that's a bigger conversation right. than what than, right. you know, what an honor roll is. That certainly drove the conversation about no C's. Yeah. That we, we, we recognize, and, and they're not alone, by the way. Mm -hmm. All three middle schools have similar statistics around the number of students who place, and, and the high school is about two-thirds of the entire high school is on the honor roll. Mm -hmm. Two-thirds? Like, I think yeah. we two can all say when, when yeah. we were. I have a problem with that, for yeah. sure. Well, yeah. 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 yeah, I think it takes the, way, uh, the meaning out of it. Exactly. Right. Yeah. Exactly. But is that the honor roll or is that the rigor of the classes? I mean, if all the kids are getting A's and B's and you have to wonder about the rigor of the Excellent classes. point. Excellent point. So I don't know the answer to that. I mean, that, that could be getting back to this appropriately uh, placed conversation um, and, and how students know or understand um, why they're taking courses at certain levels. Uh, it's certainly not my expertise, but you know, obviously, you're looking to prepare for where you want to go when you uh, graduate. And so when you 
think about positioning yourself uh, as I think our students do and early on in the process because they need to um, I think they might try to jury rig their uh, class load uh, to, to get to a place where they're they're going to position themselves well um, the same. irony of that is the more rigorous course actually gets them I think to the better place mm -hmm. overall um, my experience at Hale over the past three years is that um, the honor roll is more used as a way for the parents to reward their kids. So if you make high honors, you get an iPhone or you get a pet. So it's, the kids aren't doing it because they want to get the grades. Mm -hmm. It's because they want to get the prize. And so that's great when you get your iPhone in December, sixth grade. But then, you know, how do you continue to right. to top that right. um, and I have some uh, friends in Maynard through from baseball they don't publish their honor roll in the newspaper but they send a letter home to the parent to the student congratulating the student on yeah. their academic achievements hmm. um, and it's actually addressed to the student it's like an official letter from the school so you know that's Ooh, yes, what yes. happened? Right, you know, right. so you know, it's not even to the parent of; it's to that student. So that's a way that you can recognize the student, mm -hmm. when, and it doesn't have to be like, oh, like there's three kids on your bus who didn't make the honor roll. Right. Um, and we we just talked about this at the Hale School Council, and we were like, why do we why do we even publish it? Mm -hmm. Like, what what is the purpose? And we talked about. Do we recognize other kids? Well, what about the kids in the play? But you know what? The kids in the play just care about what the kids in the play think about them. They don't really care about what the other kids think about them. Mm -hmm. So the kids in your math class probably know how well you're doing in math because they see you every day. But does everybody need to know how well you do in math? Right. See, I disagree with that because I see it as a motivational tool. And the kids definitely at Luther Burbank are competitive like they would be in a sport. And when you see the basketball team or whatever in the newspaper because they this one scored this or you know any sporting they're getting recognition and I think the same is true with the honor roll mm -hmm. that they work extremely hard in some cases to be on the honor roll and that is definitely a mm -hmm. recognition that they deserve. I mean one advantage of the publication at least for the greater audience is they don't know how many did not make. Yeah, well, I know in, in It's a small, these are all small towns, it's pretty obvious who didn't make the they, don't, they, don't, yeah. they don't know the total number, <coughs> so they, they're not, the general public, the, yeah. internally parents are going to know and students are going to know, but you're right. So at my high school, kids would audit non-weighted classes to raise their GPAs. So do we do that at Neshoba? Do kids audit bands so that it doesn't yeah. bring them down? But it may be a non-level course. Right, yeah, because right. all it's you can get is grades. four. Right. So that would bring your average down. Right. That's interesting. Maybe it's just the word, maybe it's just the concept of honor roll that's throwing this this whole thing. Maybe that, that the whole thing needs to change. And maybe what is called highest honors now becomes honor roll becomes highest honors, not, not honor roll, you know, and that way it's, it's you know, it, it, as far as the high school goes, mm -hmm. if you're taking a college prep class and, and your concern is that the kids, because they want to get a higher grade to be on honor roll, they'll take a lower level class and, and avoiding that situation. Right. If honor roll was taken out of the picture and it was strictly a weighted or unweighted GPA and what you actually did in that class goes into your, your GPA, honor roll isn't part of the equation. That's, it's a college prep school. The transcript is the, is the, right. the, the what the kids need to be concerned about. Mm -hmm. And so by taking a higher level class, even if they get a lower grade is by according to your if they're taking a, if they get a C in an honors class it's a 3.0 right. if it's in a college prep class it's a 2.0 honor roll out of the equation they're still in better shape in an honors class absolutely than they would be and so if we've devalued what honor roll means 
anyway, why, why have an honor roll? If our, if our goal is to have kids challenging themselves, the, you know, at, mm -hmm. the, at the highest level, when really it's the transcript is, is, the, is what, what counts. Right. So what's the, that that the question rationale? has been banted about, uh, yeah, yeah. but I think, uh, you know, so we need that community um, understanding about why we should have it. I do like what, um, I don't know what her name is here, but um, I do like what you said about how the sports get recognized so much. There's so much about sports, mm -hmm. and my kids do sports too, but mm -hmm. academics don't get as much, and actually it's funny, um, one guy that um, I talked to who went to Neshoba years ago, um, who advertises in our program for drama, said to me, so are they still talking all about sports and not doing anything with all the rest of the stuff at the school? And I said, oh, I think they're trying, you know, to promote these more, the other, you know, the arts and the um, academics and everything. But I do, it is one thing with the honor roll, I guess, is it does mm -hmm. promote those kids who are, maybe all they want to do is, is academics, you know. So it gives them a chance to shine a little bit. I, I, I don't know. So mm. that would be one way. To and there should there should be ways to recognize these kids who have outstanding achievements. You know, maybe just the name on a roll is the wrong. Is, is the wrong is name. The wrong name. Mm -hmm. Or or you know, yeah, some other schools do. Is there a different way to do it? If you know, I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. yeah honor does imply a totally different moral than academic achievement. And and maybe that's you know honor implies something totally different than mm -hmm. academic. Mm -hmm. Achievement and maybe maybe part of it is that when you think honor, you really think we're talking about the full package and their sense of obligation and their sense of morals and their sense of community and maybe honor is that doesn't solve the problem, but at least while you're trying to solve the problem, also call call a spade a spade. This is an academic achievement list. It is not an honor rolls of any sort. This is what's commonly accepted as that's right. what we all grew up with that name. Exactly. You're right. Yeah. When you, you think about it, college, um, so much yeah. college, now that magna cum laude, summa cum laude, uh, magna cum laude. <laughs> we have that too. We have that too. For graduation. Yeah. 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 Oh, just happened <laughs> on Sunday. Yeah. 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 Within the term, Nancy, or at oh, the end? Graduation. Like oh, graduation. No, at graduation. Just graduation. Okay. Right. Okay. Just graduation. But I mean, some other names that I've heard, uh, some private schools call the headmaster's list. Some um, dean's, uh, list. dean's list at college. That's right. Yeah, that's um, I, you know, I don't know. I don't know. Does anybody ever call it a principal's list? I don't know. But but maybe there is something to that. Yeah. And um, I personally, I'm going to just speak my mind and then I'll stop because this isn't my chance to be speaking. But I think we should be using a weighted GPA um, when we're designating academic honors. Um, and I think that's been expressed by a couple of people here, um, and I think that it's, I think it's really important that we don't punish <laughs> the kids who are taking the hard level courses. And I think that whether we're doing it intentionally or not, I think it's happening. I think that kids feel like they're not being recognized, and it's only because they took the hardest courses that they're not the kid up getting the award. Um, and that the kids that are getting the awards are purposely, not because of the honor roll, the honor roll has nothing to do with it, but they're purposely taking the easiest courses they can so that they can get all A's and B's. So because you're saying like magna cum laude, so I'm assuming those types of awards is what you're saying? Yeah, yeah. or whether it's that or National Honor Society mm -hmm. or whether it's honor roll. Mm -hmm. I'm not saying that kids are motivated by the honor roll, but I'm saying that whether they're taking those um, classes or not, they are motivated by the grades they're getting. Mm -hmm. And I think we as a school community have a responsibility to our kids to recognize those who are taking on the challenge and not praising and exalting those who have taken the easy road. I, I, that's my piece. <laughs> I really think it is the flip. I think you don't, you don't have to worry about using these tools to motivate. However, my experience, even in my own high school graduation, my own set of things, it can be extremely demotivating for that situation you're talking about. And I think that is the biggest concern we have in society, is we're not doing anything to promote kids being at their best. Mm -hmm. We're just promoting everybody get up to a level. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Don't worry about making sure the best stay the best. And I think this is another example of that. If you mm -hmm. don't use a weighted GPA, 
you are just making sure everybody stays at a level set and nobody is striving to reach the sky. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just going to say, I just want to make sure though when we're <clears throat> waiting classes that people, kids who are art majors or music majors, that those classes aren't going to pull down their GPA just because they decide they want to take more than one art class. And so well, I they think still have to take the core courses, though. So even if they are into art, if art is their thing, right. well, then maybe they've taken a lot of art classes, but they won't have taken uh, band or woodshop or another non-leveled course. So it's not like their, their transcript is going to be weaker. They'll just have different electives. Do you see what I mean? So yeah, a two-credit art class is the same as a two-credit band or two-credit woodshop. So it doesn't matter which of those two credit electives you take, they're all going to be weighted the same. It's just your hat is your specialty, and that's where you're excelling. But they're not leveled as college or something. No. They're, no. they're all college. Is it only the um, the five, the math, science, ELA, social studies, and foreign language, are those the only weighted classes? or No, we, we do, do have honors art honest classes. We, art do have, classes. Uh, we have weighted classes in the related arts. Okay. Um, but the majority of them would be non level. But art is the only one, isn't it? Um, let's see. Are there, it's the only one no, I, think I think there is a there is a uh, there is an AP music class that he offers, um, mm -hmm. or an honors music class. I think it's AP. It's actually. AP music, music therapy. Yeah, uh, and um, so you know that's a, that's another way to be looking at it. Maybe we should be investigating how to uh, raise the rigor. Uh, in some of the, the related arts, uh, so the uh, fine arts, so that mm -hmm. you know kids can have uh, exposure to all levels. Right. I think um, the point, which Alicia, Alicia brought up, I think was something that's been eating away at me. Is this is um, we're talking specifically about an academic achievement list, and its purpose is to recognize academic achievement. Correct. So that's all well and good. We can figure out how best to do that. But I think it raises in my mind the concern I think several of us now have, have expressed is that's great that we're recognizing the academic guys and we figured out a way above all else to recognize the sports people, the athletes, but we don't have any good way to recognize the artists. We don't have a good way to recognize the musicians. Um, DI gets a lot of paper coverage, that's great, but we don't really have any recognition in place to let people excel at whatever they excel at mm -hmm. and still say, hey, you know what, you're really great. You're, you're top of the heap here in this thing. Like, do we have art shows to display their art? Yeah, do we have music it. concerts? Mm -hmm. You know, what are the different categories that we need to focus on making sure everybody feels equally as important and covered and recognized as the academic genius and the, and the great athlete and, and whatever else? We already know how to do, but this is an academic achievement list. Right. I acknowledge that, I recognize yeah. that, and that has its place too. Mm -hmm. I think we're trying to do more than we just had an art show, for example. I think we have you know, our, our uh, fine arts performances are pretty um, well respected Dra and drama, and, drama yeah. and, and so you know I think maybe we need to do more. I think it's not that you're not necessarily doing it; it's maybe not getting the community coverage. Did I know you had an art show? No, I didn't. Yeah, every week there's a story about the sports teams, but there right. isn't a story right. every week about right. one of the other. Things. And it's not in a newsletter coming home to the community, mm -hmm. and it's not, you know, so where is it? Mm -hmm. Maybe that's, it's the communication thing. Coverage thing just all those things, but it's just, I don't know, not quite as much. I don't know, but it's, but it's whatever they report on, I guess. Mm -hmm. well, you can't fault the newspaper for that. Well, yeah, there's a play. play. I mean, it's, yeah, well, right. it's well covered. It's well covered. Right. Like those big things, the plays, the, the um, specifically those. Right. Yeah. So I want to hone in a, a, a bit because I, I, I hear a consensus around the weighted versus the unweighted. To, in terms of academic achievement, the going to a C to include in weighted, where do people feel comfortable there? Is there a weighted, you don't have to do that. Well, is there a reason so we can't you know, combine them? It's average. <laughs> Is yeah, there a reason you can't say the weighted GPA, but that still can't include oh, CDs or Fs? Yeah, absolutely. They're not, they're not mutually exclusive. Oh, okay. That's why I'm trying to drill down. Okay. Because, what, what I, because we use the GPA, 
you, you could get to uh, 3.5 and still have a C, you know, because it's averaged. So I'm just I'm trying to check the dip so I'm thinking dipstick if you in, have in terms a, of if you weigh the GPA and you have a 3.5 but you have a C that quarter you don't get on the honor roll. To me, I, I don't think you do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that's all. Okay. So that's what I was trying to think because right now we do. You know, yeah. So that would be the change. Yeah, I think I think you need to make it a little bit more rigorous than more rigorous. That's that's, that's where we're going. Okay. okay. Did yeah. it say on your notes that um, it was final grades? Is that a change? Well, she was saying to no, specific quarter. So well, final grade, meaning final grade. Oh, final grade for that, grade for that period. period. Right. Okay, right. Right. all right. right. So right. that was so the other C in, in a okay. quarter or something. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, but you can get a C on a test you before all your other grades bring it up. Absolutely. Yeah, so that, that's where I was uh, drilling down to, to understand, because I think that's, that's going to be a change, a, a C change, pardon the pun, uh, for our high school. Well, and for every middle school by hand. Hale's the only one Hale's that's the only never one. allowed to see. Uh, 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 but every, like middle school is, they're all equal. But currently, Hale's is an A honor roll or right. an AB honor roll. Right. One C will keep you off, keep even you if off. you had A pluses and everything else. Mm -hmm. I think that also, if you do it with weighted and no C or whatever the threshold is, mm -hmm. it allows for that situation where the college prep kid getting a B is it's still so feels odd. like I really did something exactly. well, yes. but if you got a C in the in the um, whatever the, the honors class mm -hmm. or the AP class, um, it's it's well you know what you really need to work harder to get on it or right. maybe this level is if you if you think you're an A student and you're only getting C's maybe you're in the wrong level or something. Yeah. Did you have a comment I wanted? To Okay. Yeah, I just was going to say, if we switch to a weighted GPA, which seems to be the consensus of the room, we'd have to raise the threshold. Otherwise, everybody, 100%, not 85%, 100% of the kids would be on it, um, it seems to me. So um, I think we've got to think about where that threshold will be. Mm -hmm. You don't think raising it so they can't have below a... Um, well, essentially, for the for the honors courses, for for the weighted GPA, uh, it's three point five, right? So B minus is three point seven five. So that's that's the lowest uh, a student could get on a on a weighted GPA. So then each quarter you would be calculating a new. GPA. It's not your cumulative GPA, correct? No, no. Well, we've talked about it in that terminology. Right. It would have to be that. It would have to be that quarter. It would have to be that quarter. But that just, well, I guess you just every kid gets a GPA calculated for every quarter. Right. Then that means if you don't make the honor roll the first quarter because you had a C. You can never make the honor roll for the year because you had a C. No, no, no. It should be no, for that. that. Just yeah, I say that for but that. But so the proposal is actually to go to semester. Currently, we do quarters by high school. It is, it is um, the proposal is to go to semesters for the honor roll uh, because we have you know courses that are semester long. So do you have courses that are quarter long? No. Okay. So it, so you could get. Conceivably, you could get a C for a quarter, as long as you got an A for the, the second quarter. For the semester grade. Because the semester grade would be okay. a. What, yeah. what is the reasoning for not doing it in quarters? Um, there, there's a little bit of this thinking behind that, uh, but also to um, just make it based on the uh, the semester, so that it was honoring the the full course, so that so that. You know, it would include the full course. How does the transcript look going to colleges? Is it, it only, has, see the final only has final year grades? Final, final year grades. There aren't any quarter grades. Yeah. What? So what about that for an idea? What if we only did honor roll at the end of a year? Well, that was debated. You know, so I think that's something that we'd love your feedback on. I mean, it, it could easily be done. At, at, it would be much more uh, easily done at the end of the year. I think the problem with that, though, is if you 
are getting any motivational factor out of it, it's already too late to do anything about it. Mm. At least if you do it quarterly, and which I guess I would make the argument for it makes sense to do it quarterly, not semesterly, that's all right, um, is because there's a chance for the kid to say, I'm going to do better this next semester. And they still, for semester long classes, have another quarter to improve. Yeah. yeah. Um, and, but yeah, it should be the weighted GPA for that semester's grade, or that quarter's grades, no C in that quarter, and you start over again next quarter mm -hmm. for the purpose of the honor. So work. just to make things complicated, when it comes to time to apply to colleges, <laughs> it asks you for your honors and awards, and it asks you the year that you earned them in, check the box, 9th, 10th, 11th, 12th. And it's always tripping kids up in our district because you know, well, I was on it the first term of the of freshman year, and then I was on it again the second term of 11th grade, and, you know, it's not clean. clean. It doesn't, right. I mean, I would argue that maybe the once a year is... It might be. Instead of 16 times, they, they do it four. <laughs> right. Right. And you're still getting, the students are still seeing their grades. They still Absolutely. know when they need to improve. It's just that they're not getting that... But designation. Yes. designation. But yeah. what's the point of the designation? Let's go back to that. Consistency, that they're consistently good students, that they're consistently maintaining their average. Not that you just, this concept you understood well and got an A, but the rest of the year you did not. What's the purpose of a published academic achievement list? What's the point of recognizing kids? Is it the same as it would be if it were a sport that they were playing, that they did well at, that if that's what you are working hard at, you're achieving your goal, so you're getting recognition for achieving your personal goal is to be an A student, and just like if your personal goal is to score touchdowns, you get recognition so for your hard basketball's work. Basketball's in the newspaper every <coughs> week for two months. So this kid who's sitting at the kitchen table doing their homework every night and handing in their papers gets like a once a year. In the summer, when everybody's gone. <laughs> Yeah, I mean it's it's I kind of a who cares. It's over. Semester, not a quarter. I don't know. Yeah. Semester I understand your point. Nancy, the question about that point you brought up is if if the kid fills it in as yes, I've achieved it, and it's once out of however many, but I have achieved it. Is that incorrect on the form? Is it it's, supposed to be yeah. if you've done it all? Well, four? it's not incorrect, and the the. the the interesting thing is that the colleges have your transcript, so they're going to look it up anyway. Right. So, so it's an interpretation it's issue. Just, Are you honorable or not? It's <laughs> just something um, uh, for a kid to be able to put down. But I got this award. I was on the honor roll. For us, it's a little tricky because we don't do it by year, but they ask for it by year. So, um, you know, I mean, it's not the end all be all. And again, it goes back to the question why do we do an honor roll? Is it so that a kid can put it on their college application? I don't know. Can I just ask the gym question? Because sure. you said um, that at the high school level you weren't including gym, but at the middle school we did. And where are we with that now? So this one includes all courses kids take. Okay. Across the board. And so well. gym would be a controversial Jim is, uh, is a non-level course. Okay. But so it's still weighted forward. by number of days. But it would be weighted by number of days. Okay. Because it's good. doesn't seem this is not going to be still popular. have to get a B minus. It doesn't seem academic to me, gym class. It seems you're still trying. Either you're trying your hardest or you're not. And they're not supposed to be grading that based on but it's not how good of an athlete you are, are they? Uh, they do. Not, they do. Yes, I mean, I'm the teacher, I think. It depends on the, uh, well, and we're trying to firm that up more so it's more consistent. But there are expectations. There are standards that they have to meet. Right. So it's it does. usually if they change their, in, in health school, it's usually if they change their clothes and right. if they. We're trying to move away from that. Yeah. We're trying to make it more to, well, to the standards. Yeah. There are a lot of eighth graders who can't do cartwheels. So should we no, penalize we them? Right. Or I, if yeah. they tried their best? Not I really. feel like yeah. effort. Right in like gym or art or music like you know band obviously you need to practice if well, I think you're music not practicing. and art are, are academic your brain is exercised but gym right. is your body is exercising it's a different mm -hmm. but at the high school you could take like a wellness class like a nutrition class but that's health that's a different which is that's a health class but that different. fulfills your wellness requirement mm -hmm. 
Susie was saying mm -hmm. they created maybe oh, an effort. Yeah, like Jim. if you just try, you get a 95, I guess. And then I guess if you're better at it, you can get like a 96 or higher. So I mean, if you do try, you get like an assured A, really. So it is based off of effort. That's at the high school level you're talking about? Yeah. Which is different than at least our middle school. Right. right. And we're, we are trying to change that and is make that it less the about goal? effort. No. Or is that what you're changing We're trying away to move away from. from that. So what would you base it on if it's not? Knowledge of how to, not effort, but knowledge of how to play a sport, engage in a sport, so engage in fitness. Rules and things. So it's rules, understanding the, the value, value isn't the right word, um, the purpose for physical fitness, lifelong leisure. So, so more health oriented than Standards. I mean, very arti well articulated standards. Okay. Yeah. But understand the rule. Sorry about that. Yeah. But understand the rules and playing the game is a lot different. Like you can read the rule book and completely get the rules and not be able to like play the game. Right. So finding a finding a balance of being able to know them and apply them, mm -hmm. which is true in all academic subject areas. We want you to know something and we want you to apply it. And so, it, are we going to assess that? through observation or is Jim going to become another class where kids are having to write long you know self evaluations on how well they played mat ball for the past six weeks because for some kids they just need a space where they're not going to have to do the writing or you know some gym could be their safe place sure. or art could be their safe place where they get to you know express themselves in a different way and if they're struggling with the academics, mm -hmm. making them do the writing in every single class just makes but that school. Doesn't, that doesn't necessarily mean you're writing about it, it's that you understand the concepts right. that you're being asked to use, yeah. and you may not physically be able to do them, you know, on a 10 point scale, but you know what it's supposed to be. I think that's what you were getting right. at. And I, I, I would just say that our curriculum has writing in all the content areas, so yes, there will be more writing in PE. But there are accommodations and modifications that need to be made for students who are not writers. So th that would still apply. Do you have any numbers on what percentage of kids at the high school who currently are on the honor roll are getting C's or lower? I don't. I, I need to get that. Okay. And yeah. I think it would be useful to know um, the breakdown in, based on the rigor of the class. So. How many of the honors AP kids are getting C's? How many of the mm -hmm. accelerated, and how many of the mm -hmm. um, college prep? Because you know, maybe it doesn't make a difference, but um, I would, you know, I think a lot of this is coming from people looking over at so and so is on the honor roll, and my kid's smarter than them. So if my kid's taking honors classes and doesn't make the honor roll, but so-and-so does, and I know that they're not taking honors classes. Like, that's not going to address why people are raising the honor and honor roll issue. Um, I had a phone call from someone, so my opinion is, which I've kept under rooms, very similar to these ladies' opinion, but I had a phone call from a parent right before I came who said, I, have, I can't make a meeting, but I really want to make sure that the point is made. I have two kids on either end of the spectrum. My child who just graduated and is in honors and AP classes doesn't care about the honor roll. She's self-motivated. But my child who's on the other end of the spectrum is motivated by the honor roll. And I hadn't really thought about it that way because her question to me was, who's the honor roll? For is it for the parents, the teachers, and the community? I'm like, well, I would think it's for the students, right? That's what we like. I mean, it's for the students. So she said, well, if it's for the students, then her position was that it should be. It should some. It should not be weighted. That was what her point was. It should not be weighted. I personally would like to see it weighted, but I just think it's only fair to present that because it is a different way of looking. Okay. How does it hurt for our student who's looking at it with the three? If he's in CP classes yeah. and the honor roll is based. It's still 3.0 or better, so if he gets a B or better, then he's in the honor roll. Right? 
Is that is that the first one? Yeah. Yeah. Oh well, then, then, that's then that's that that goes to my point earlier that if we kept that if we used a weighted GPA and we kept the threshold oh, three point oh yeah right that everybody will be going. Oh, yeah, right, right. Right. I, there will be yeah. ten kids in the whole high school not on it. No, no, I mean <laughs> so, <laughs> so the, the the way to to address the so that as well as that <laughs> is simply to go by letter grades that if you're a B or better you are on the honor regardless of. That then you're not using the weight. weight. Right. That, well, right. that's right. You're not using the uh, you're not using No, you're not using the weight at all. Right. Yeah. So then you've got the kid who's taking all honors in AP and has um, I don't know, mostly B's and won't be on the honor roll, and you've got a kid who's taking only C P mm -hmm. and they will be on the honor roll. Right. Yeah. And are we all comfortable with that? Absolutely for not. College I'm not either. I, I don't think yeah. that yeah. isn't college. I don't think that's recognizing the right four point oh though, not a three point oh? I'm sorry, college prep, the best you can do, you can do as, as an A plus or whatever is a 4.0. Right. So, so if you have a 3.0, that particular student concern, she's only getting, or he or she's only getting Bs anyway, right? right. But the weighted model, would, would the, the bottom line would be a 3.75. So, so only students who get an A in, uh, C, in uh, CP, CP make classes the oh. make the honor roll. Maybe that's too high for uh, maybe the thresh maybe the spacing should be yeah, more drastic between really honors. There needs honors. to be like a, a little tweak better. in the metric. Right. It yeah. sounds like because if it, oh, I'm sorry, Andrew. No, sorry. sorry. Oh, I'm just okay. Clarifying. Yeah, it just because that I, I, I can see what you're saying. Where if it's uh, if in the honors and CP, the only way they can get on honor roll is by basically having a well, 3.75, that's a B plus. I mean, that's, there's an argument to be made for that. It's, it's, I guess it's the same thing I was saying. Is it's, it's more of a high honor roll, not an honor roll. It's, 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 a, it's, a, it's a higher level of achievement. Right. If we're going to raise the bar, it's a, it's a, it's a big step. It's, it's, it is raising the bar. It's raising the bar. Right. Right. And so, um, yeah. Anyway, but then back to the question about the middle school, and, and we, don't, we can go back to this, is, is that going to be part of the conversation? You said we're going to extend into the fall and then mm -hmm. to the first grading period we're making some changes. If we're in the middle school, we're talking about everybody making this, we don't have weighted and unweighted in the, in the middle school, right. but we do have a, a rigor issue, I think. Right. If that is the case, okay. how does that get addressed, and and in what, how you know, that that's that seems like a bigger issue to tackle. Right. Mm -hmm. Well, one one way it would be addressed is if if it was B or better. Mm -hmm. that, so that would address a piece of that. Mm -hmm. um, Which still be at eighty five percent. It's still going to be a large group. We do yeah. have high performing kids. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. Okay. Well, did some of that addressed. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but by by weighting the specials in, in middle school, I'm talking about specifically, by weighting the specials, you're shifting that that GPA, the, the weighted GPA a little bit, and by, you said there's no levels in the middle school, but at least in eighth grade, there's two eighth grade math levels. Mm -hmm. I don't know if right. there's any math. But the grades aren't weighted. Even. The grades aren't but weighted. Grades aren't but if we're going with weighted grades, I think we should start because eighth grade algebra, the two levels are not the same. Mm -hmm. So why don't we level them so that we're getting and effectively do a weighted GPA at the middle school as well? I realize that requires a little finagling to figure out what that I don't is. Know if that's mm -hmm. fair because you're only weighting one, one subject. Course. So that's not really fair to the kid who excels in English. And the kids aren't taking their. Right. She doesn't have an opportunity to take honors English. So mm -hmm. you're kind of penalizing the kids that are not math oriented. Agreed. But I do think more than 50% of the kids take algebra. So it's not like it's, you know, the top 2%. It, it may be right. in the school, how, yeah. you know, a, a school specific thing. But it does seem like if you're preparing them to start thinking weighted GPA, we should be recognizing those two math classes as some difference as well. And weighting the specials uh, by, by powers. Right. Throw out there that, that the grades in middle school don't go anywhere. They right. don't matter. So they're yeah. not going to go on your transcript. They're not going to be sent to 
colleges. Which is back to the argument of why is there this academic right. achievement list for the middle school in the first place. Mm -hmm. But I think yeah, that's back to Lorraine's point too about being self-motivated. You know, if, if a kid, I mean, I'm sure there are a lot of sixth graders thinking, I want to make sure I get really good math grades next year so that I can be in algebra in eighth grade. <laughs> they, there, there are, and, 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 and right. there, you know, that is, that's the carrot, and and, um, and I think that's what we want. It to exactly. Be. That's 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 our objective. So, right. and then in eighth grade, you're trying to be considered for, you know, accelerated or honors. You know, exactly. Kind of go, hopefully, you know, kids right. But the honor roll or academic achievement list plays absolutely no role in either of those two arguments. Mm -hmm. Right, but you're right. It's, right. it's, it's, exactly. it's an right. after the fact yeah. thing. It's, it's not, not a thing, thing to motivate them. To yeah. Yeah. It's, yeah. it's yeah. well, it's a way to say, <laughs> "Nice job, right. right on the back." It's not. It's. Mm -hmm. it, it's mm. So, Last word. Um, currently at Hale, it's an A B honor roll. B minus is considered a B. In the new proposal, if you get B minuses across the board, you don't have a three point out, so you will not make the honor roll. So, because it's average, as long as it's a B minus or above, it will be there. But isn't a B minus? Uh, but it's averaged, so it's, it'll be counted because it's not a C. So if but you if have, you get a B minus in every single class, then you're not going to make it. Okay. Are you concerned about that, or are you glad? About I that? I don't know what the breakdown is. I think they need to look and see where the kids are going. I will say, if like one point keeps the kid off the honor roll. That's going to be a lot more phone calls to the school. But if one point keeps a kid off that the honor roll, that kid yes. has a really good shot at making the honor roll. Yeah. But sometimes it's just like bad luck. There's a test like the last and day. And you get the, the next right. quarter That's or the right. next. But yeah. everybody will yeah. ask. That happens yeah. now. We, we, we have those phone calls. <laughs> uh, you know, they, so, I mean, the, you'll always have a point away. You know? Right. With whatever whatever point you choose, there'll matter. be a point away. With right. whatever proposal um, comes out of at least this discussion, mm -hmm. Do you have the ability to dry run that against, for example, the high school um, grades to see where does that put yeah. us on curves and Absolutely. honor rolls and stuff, yes. just as a test yeah. run we'll, to we'll see? Yeah. I mean, okay. I, my, my only caution about that in the data that you're, well, I think it's, it's worthy. We're not looking for a particular number of kids. We're trying to define what honor looks like, what achievement looks like. If there are less kids who meet that honor, it's not a, a good or bad issue for, our, for me, I'll speak for myself, because the communities have said, this is what we think honor is. So, you know, I'm not sure it, it's gonna be an interesting exercise to look at the data. I'm not sure it's gonna inform me personally, professionally, in terms of what the, the results should be. In terms of, the, because I'm really looking for, what are we defining honor to look like? What, what does achievement look like? How do we define it? Mm -hmm. So I don't have a target number of kids. No, but I'm you could if something's way out of whack after having done that, you say, oh, wait, wait a minute. There was something. It, it, it might, yeah, it'll jar us to think about something. Right. It's but, a red flag. Right? Yeah. Right. With that, like, is there a way to look at the numbers? Right now, PE mm -hmm. is not counted for the honor roll, correct, at the high school level? Correct. So we it's the only look course. at how many children who are academically excelling will be knocked off of the honor roll because of phys ed. Mm -hmm. That's a number we need to look at too. Because if this is an academic achievement mm -hmm. that we're recognizing, yeah. that's really not PE. That's not it. That's, that's not PE the that way they're is defining it, which right. is the issue. I think right. we want to make right. PE more academic. But That's you're making idea. it less academic the way the direction you're going, from what you described. So. I don't think so. Sounds like you're making it more about being an athlete and less about understanding health. Well, there there are two different courses, strengths <coughs> of course, but it's understanding the games, understanding the nature of being an ap being athletic, um, not not to be uh, a premium athlete but the value of exercise, the value of being active. That's the part that we're trying but to teach But you said kids. you were changing it from effort and showing up and doing a good job as a participant to are you a great floor hockey player? 
I didn't say that. Okay, that's what I interpreted what no. you said. He was saying it was good, they were going to introduce more writing into it. Well, yeah, that's a whole different issue. But, but, <laughs> but okay. I mean, there will be some more writing. But. So not just, what, what did you say? You change your clothes and you show up, you get an A? Is that no, what I said. That was the change. No, he was never saying that. <laughs> that is definitely not how it works. Because there are kids who yeah. just change their clothes, show up, and then they just sit there and they get an F. Yeah. Well, not. Well, not. I, I know what you mean, that. but yeah. Okay. They they obviously don't get like highly as weighted. I well, just to mention my guess, I've never asked them before. <laughs> <laughs> well, right. That's part of it too, right? Is honor roll is the only place where everybody knows everybody else's business. Yeah, and I, was, and I don't know if you really want everyone to know everybody else's business, though. I don't think so. But that's what honor roll does. Is it just made your business public? public? Right. That's a good idea. But if you make phys ed about physical education, not about being an athlete, then does that address your concern of it not being academic anymore? It shouldn't, I mean, the two have to go and hand in hand. You have to make that change before you can right. call yeah. it academic. Mm -hmm. Right. Because right now you have to be a superstar athlete to get an A plus, I think, from the middle school level. You have to be, you know, right. the baseball mm -hmm. star to get the A plus. You don't mm -hmm. get an A plus if you're and an average teacher. guy just doing the best you can, changing your clothes, showing up, trying to do what you're trying. supposed to do. Yeah. You get, you know, you get an A, but not an A plus. So. so we need to change that. Well, do you? That's what you've got to address. You've got to figure I, I out, is it about, yeah. Yeah, I think we did. Yeah. Any other points that have not been raised that you've been dying to raise? Um, well, you know that I have concerns about habits of the mind mm -hmm. and, um, since this is a standards-based report card we're looking at for middle school and that habits were taken out because some things like homework getting done, the teachers can't really assess if the kid's doing the homework or their parents doing it for them or they're hanging over them until it gets done. Um, but are the habits being graded based on where they're supposed to be at the end of the school year or based on where they're supposed to be at the end of term one? Because a first term sixth grader is right. like a mess and grading them on what they're supposed to be able to do by the end of sixth grade. And you know if they're forgetting their notebook at home every single day, so they get to sell them. But they did the work, mm -hmm. so they have the knowledge. Right. So they get for habits of mind, there is, there is not um, a standard, end of year standard. Mm -hmm. So they're going to be looking at the cumulative within that term. All right, so then I think it's important that every single teacher in the middle school is on the same page so that it's Absolutely. not like the gym teachers have one Absolutely. standard yep. and the math teachers have a different standard right. because then, you know, it's, it's too many things for the kids to. Right, no, I agree. So you brought up a good question that I've forgotten about is this whole standards-based reporting. Mm -hmm. Does that mean that in term or quarter one, only person who already knew all the material for that grade can get an A plus? No, because the, the, we, we are, we're running dual systems. So the standards is one mechanism, and then the grades is another. So the honor roll will only be based on the grades. And the grades are not counted toward how you're achieving the standards you're working at achieving the standards? Um, Cumulative standards. There are assessments that are graded that help inform whether or not you're meeting the standards. But you can get 100 on a math test, and that's an A. It doesn't mean you've mastered the standard. Right. It just means you've mastered everything that's on that test. So everything you've covered in quarter one, if you've done outstanding, you're going to get an A+, plus, even, if, even though you haven't covered three quarters of the material yet. That's correct. Right. It does, but it doesn't mean you will get a three because you might not have mastered it because it'll take longer to correct teach the standard three. So three, it means you've mastered the standard, but something like math, where maybe you know it's more than eight weeks worth of coursework to master that standard. Right. You but might that's get not you might get a grade that's the progressing other, towards that's the, the standard. Parallel. You haven't mastered right. the standard, but that doesn't mean that you still can't get an A. And, and it'd be highly unlikely that a student was getting an A and they score one. If that was happening, we have, we have bigger issues. 
But those one, two, three things are not part of Correct. this. Correct. Okay. But isn't it okay for teachers to have different standards in each class because no. they're requiring different? Absolutely not. No. Absolutely not. That's what we're trying to move away from. Okay. So we're trying to have standardized, standardized learning happen so okay. that you can't have a teacher uh, of English in Stowe have a different set of standards for seventh grade English in Lancaster. They have to be the same because they all come back, come together at our high school. So we want the, the expectations to be the same. My only caveat to that is you could have in, in the scoring, um, because they have different set of, of topics, So they have different set of topics here. Um, so this is going to be a standard, for example, set across gin across the three towns. Mm -hmm. ELA across the three towns. In the ideal system, as we use it more and more, within grade seven, it's going to look alike. Within grade six, it's going to look alike. That's going to take more time, but that's the goal. But every teacher can have a different um, idea of what class preparation means. Uh, we're working hard to make it as similar as possible. <coughs> I mean, that, that's the, the idea. To, I, to I think, said. Kathy's earlier point, yeah. it's very hard if you have the English teacher saying class preparation means you have to have a pencil right. uh, in class, and the math teacher says, no, that's not, that's OK. Right. You don't have to. That's sending the wrong messages, mixed messages to kids. So we want to get people on the same page okay. around. I mean, well, that's but a, there is going to be some. There's going to be some. Oriented. Yes. Okay. Yeah. There's going to be some. And that's why I say it's going to be first across content and then across team okay. as best we can. And that'll just take time to get people to talk together and mm -hmm. iron those things out. That one, two, three you talked about that is curriculum oriented is yet a third thing from the MIS, is that correct? MIS is one. Yes. Grades are two, two. and well, curriculum standards is three. third yeah. column. Right. But third grade. Yeah. I mean, we've always done these. The standards is new. Yeah. But the curriculum standards are important to know because your kid could have an A in math, but they don't understand geometry. It's just that they're, you know, superior performance in fractions right. has averaged and you know there's this big gaping hole so exactly. so the standards can help inform where they need you know if you're like oh let's go on Khan Academy and, and work on a couple of geometries or Perfect when you example. go to your math tutor your math tutor doesn't have to redo it or they go for extra help in that subject or maybe they don't take honors geometry if we already know it's a weak spot you know right. so uh, but yeah, I think it, it's important to be consistent because um, you don't want it to seem like some teachers are being overly permissive and some exactly. teachers are being overly strict. And like, because if a habit is keeping a kid off the honor roll, then mm -hmm. it's just going to feel they're going to feel like, what's the point? Right. Why bother? Right. If they they decide that that teacher just doesn't like them, mm -hmm. then. It doesn't matter how hard I work in math if this other class will keep me off. D don't you run the risk to some extent of over dictating to the teacher what his or her personality as a teacher will be? I mean, I, I remember growing up, I treasured the differences in teachers, and that made one teacher perfect for me and totally wrong for somebody else. And some of that had to do with looseness in a class. Some of that had to do with permissiveness. Some of that had to do with approach. And if you say it has to be standardized across, haven't you taken away the individuality of what makes a teacher unique? I don't think so. I think the, the individuality comes in the presentation and the general um, atmosphere that a teacher creates within their classroom. Expectations, though, that are, are actually compared need to be similar across the board so that when we say there's an A in um, seventh grade in Stowe, it's the same as in Bolton and it's the same as in Lancaster. Otherwise, when they get to high school where they come together, 
if your A is, is, is a loose A, only based on two standards, and your A is based on 10, and yours is on four, what are the teachers going to do when they get I them? agree with that on, on the grades, but you kind of switched because originally we were discussing um, these things, the but learning it, habits. But it all comes together because one of the, one of the big things that, that uh, the high school teachers talk about in terms of moving kids and having, helping kids progress is getting them to a point of independence. And so if they're getting information that is not standardized in terms of expectations, again, when the kids come into the school, um, that level of independence is going to look different. So they, you know, if they look at a report card that says they're all meets, but you were very laissez-faire, and you're really uh, an ass, then you're going to place yourself incorrectly, and teachers are going to be expecting you to do something when you're not really prepared to do it. And that independence, I think, is, a, is an important skill to get to by the senior year, but it's, it's not something that teachers necessarily, uh, if teachers sh should expect in their freshman year, but if the documents say that they have it, they should have it. Well, I appreciate the time you've given me. You've given me a lot to think about, and there's a lot of good information here. Uh, we will be spending some time this summer looking at this, and again, there'll be some more forums in the fall. Uh, we do need to come to some resolution by the end of uh, September, mid October so that we can uh, be ready for the uh, first trimester. Um, so uh, be looking for those. So thank you very much. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you.